The feeling of pure excitement as I booted up Destiny for the first time has not been matched by any other media release I've had in a long time. It may sound fucking stupid, but I actually start to physically shake when I get to experience something I've been looking forward to for such a long time. I had such faith in Bungie, they had me in the palm of the figurative hand. I was ready to be introduced into a gorgeous new world, filled with characters to get invested in, stories to be told, and the most ambitious game Bungie has ever tried to craft. But after playing for well over 60 hours, Destiny's not what I expected it to be. I don't think it's what anyone expected it to be. I'm not left wondering why Destiny isn't a better game. I'm left wondering what happened. Because something isn't right. It might just be a gut feeling that I have. It might be as simple as it looks, but I refuse to believe it. What happened? What happened with Destiny? Now, I'm not saying I have the answers, but let's talk about it. Start a discussion. Ask questions. This is not a review. This is something more personal to me. This is much more of an analysis. An in-depth view of what I think about Destiny. My most detailed and longest video I've ever made at this point. So let's get on with it. I find it extremely interesting that the three new biggest IPs of 2014, Watch Dogs, Titanfall and Destiny, have all been considered disappointments in one way or another. They don't really have that much in common, despite the shooting a whole lot of dudes thing, but there is one primary situation they all share. They were all hyped up to a completely unrealistic level that no game could realistically live up to. And none of them are bad games. In fact, they all currently have at least a green rating on Metacritic. But Metacritic can fuck off and isn't important. I'm saying it. I've played them all and none of them are downright bad games. But what was it that made Destiny specifically a disappointment? Was it the way the marketing effectively lied about what the game is? Was it the hype and buzz the advertisers managed to create around it? Or is it our own fault for expecting so much from a prolific studio with such a good track record? The thing is, no matter what anyone says, Destiny is not a bad game. It just feels incomplete, like something has been torn away or lost in development. I was under the impression that Bungie had been working on this game even before the release of Halo 3 ODST, hence the Destiny easter egg way back in 2009. Sure, it might have only been a fragment of an idea at that point, but five years is a long time to get this. A measly four hour campaign with little over 30 minutes of cutscenes, a non-existent story, atrocious mission design, and not even one character or event you can get attached to or invested in. There are so many problems with the way this game tries to tell a story that I'm struggling to even find a place to begin. Well, I guess starting at the beginning would help. You hear that, Bungie? A bit of context is always nice. So the game opens with this little robot called a ghost flying around, obviously looking for something, who then proclaims, Is it possible? There you are. It turns out your character's been dead for a long ass time, and this ghost somehow has the ability to bring you back to life. You never find out why, or how this technology is a thing that exists. In fact, the same principle can be applied to the rest of the game. Destiny just kind of assumes that you already know everything about this world. And the worst part is, they had the perfect chance to explain it to us. You're a character that's not experienced any of this world because you've been dead, much like how it's the player's first time in the world. So it's a perfect reason for the game to throw a fuck ton of exposition at you. But guess what? They don't. Ghost even says, You're gonna see a lot of things you won't understand. And instead of your character reacting to being brought back from being fucking dead, they just sort of accept it and don't stop to ask, Wait, how in God's name am I not dead anymore? What the hell is going on? And it doesn't stop there. You don't know how long I've been looking for you. Why? Why are you even here? Once you manage to get hold of his ship and escape the Cosmodrome, there's a tease to this interesting hooded character who's just standing there and watching like Batman. Don't even get me started on this fucking character. We'll get onto that later. The ghost takes us back to what's known as the Tower, a hub world for all the main activities in the game. Welcome to the last safe city on Earth. The only place the Traveler can still protect. Why is it the last safe city? How is the Traveler able to protect anything? It just looks like a big white ball to me. It's not exactly up to much, is it? Why don't all the enemies just sort of attack it right now? And this tower is where the Guardians live. We are then introduced to who is known as the Speaker, an infuriatingly interesting character, who I was convinced was going to turn out to be a villain or something. But that's too much of an event for this game. No, his only use in the story is to talk nonsensical exposition at you, or to congratulate you when you shoot the baddies. There was a time when we were much more powerful. Okay then, show me a cool flashback to a bunch of high-tech looking soldiers and ships, a booming city. Just show me something, anything! But that was long ago. Is that, is that what you're gonna tell me? You're not gonna tell me how or why they were so much more powerful? You're not gonna show me? You're not gonna show it to me? Okay, I guess I'll do it later. Spoilers, they don't! You must have no end of questions, Guardian. All right, okay, so, so this is where we'll get some context. In its dying breath, the Traveler created the Ghosts to seek out those who can wield its light as a weapon. Guardians to protect us and do what the Traveler itself no longer can. Finally, our character decides to ask a question about the Traveler and what the hell it actually is. What happened to it? 
and the response that you get is something so horribly insulting and cryptic. It's like something a politician would say to completely dodge a question. I could tell you of the great battle centuries ago. How the traveler was crippled. I could tell you of the power of the darkness, its ancient enemy. There are many tales told throughout the city to frighten children. Lately, those tales have stopped. Now, the children are frightened anyway. Now is when your character should have said, how about instead of saying what you could tell me, you actually fucking tell me what's going on. I literally have no idea what's happening right now. It's infuriating to say the least. And still, I have no answers, even after finishing the story. The story doesn't tell you shit. Not even the most basic form of setup is provided. Like in Star Wars, for example. They tell their own contained story in a very basic way, but leave hints and nods to other things that make the universe bigger. Or like in Mass Effect, where you focus on one person and their simple mission to begin with and slowly but surely build up the universe step by step. Destiny tries to be too broad, it leaves too many things to question without giving us the bare essentials to enjoy an ultimately extremely simple story. What this game needed was a codex like in Mass Effect, a hub of information that can provide you context to certain things that would feel forced if they're explained in a cutscene. But instead, we get grimoire cards, collectibles you unlock in game, but are only accessible, get this, through the Bungie website or companion app. Not in the fucking game, you have to detach yourself from the universe, actively unimmerse yourself from the game, just to read some fucking Yu-Gi-Oh cards to get a little bit of context that nothing in the game gives you. What a complete joke that entire idea is. And here is where we get to one of the most glaring problems with the plot of this game. What can I do? You must push back the darkness. Guardians are fighting on Earth and beyond. Join them. Your ghost will guide you. I only hope he chose wisely. It just doesn't feel important when the plot of the game is you need to join up with a huge army of other main character heroes to be the hero and beat the baddies. Because when everyone is the hero, no one is. All the urgency is lost when you have 20,000 other Master Chiefs running around and doing the exact same thing as you. It makes it so impersonal and not special. When you play as Master Chief in Halo, you feel important because you know you're the last Spartan 3, the last hope. The AI reacts to you as if you're some sort of force to be reckoned with, a legend. And it creates a sense of urgency. It gives you a place. When the framework of your story is that you need to work together with a bunch of other identical heroes, it just seems muted in comparison. Once you salvage a warp drive from the Cosmodrome in an uninspired and boring mission, you head to the moon because video game. You were looking for a lost guardian. I still don't really know why. I guess it's not important. So when you find the lost guardian's body, you turn back and see Robot Batman again, perching on some moon rocks. Then she fucks off, like Batman. The doors open, then you fight some dudes. Then Robot Batman actually decides to interact with you. I know what you're about to do. It's brave. But there are enemies out here you would not believe. What am I about to do? Why is it so brave? What is happening? She tells you to fight some more dudes and then to help her. And with that, we're completely done with the story on the moon. There are still some story missions left to do, but the only reason they exist is to pad out the game slightly with missions in the same areas you've already been. These missions have no cutscenes or anything interesting. The only explanation you get is some trite dialogue that is talked to you in the mission loading screen. Or as the mission ends, your ghost tells you how you did a good job or whatever. When we get to Venus, we're told the colony here was built by the Ishtar Collective, and that it was all lost in the collapse. This colony was built by by the Ishtar Collective. Records say they once studied ruins older than humanity itself. We thought this was all lost in the collapse. They don't tell you who or what the Ishtar Collective is, or what the Collapse was, they just move on as if we already know. I suppose it expects us to go and read a Grimoire card about it. Well guess what, Destiny? I'm not gonna do that. So after you kill a bunch of new robot enemies, you finally get the first proper interaction with Robot Batman, in what, in my opinion, is the best cutscene in the entire game. And it's still insultingly bare. Who are you? Why have you been watching us? I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. Are you- are you fucking serious? You don't have time to explain why you don't have time to explain. I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. This is the first game in a new IP. We have never seen or heard anything about this universe before. What possible reason? What could be so fucking important, so urgent, that you can't sit down for five minutes and give us the most simple of explanations for why, uh, anything is happening? I wasn't talking to you, little light. I'm a ghost, actually. The reason I say this is the best cutscene in the game is because there is at least a tiny bit of character development, a tiny amount of playful banter. I'm grasping at straws here, but I did find a lot of this scene quite genuinely charming. It's a window into what the story could have been, I suppose, if there was actually some kind of narrative at all. Have you heard of the Black Garden? No, actually. We've heard the legend. What? What? No! No, we haven't! I've been dead for hundreds of years! Please tell me what's happening! If we're going to find the Black Garden, we 
you need to see the awakening. You know what, it's clear to me now that none of you assholes are gonna tell me shit, so please, you just lead the way. Everything in this game is called The Blank, The Speaker, The Vex, The Darkness, The Covenant, I mean The Fallen, The Cabal, The Awoken, The Hive, The Stranger, The Black Garden, The The, The What? Robot Batman fucks off until the last cutscene of the game. We still don't even know her name, never find it out either. This whole thing feels like the end of the first act, doesn't it? We've been given a task, things don't make much sense yet, but it's okay because we still have two more acts to go through. Well, believe it or not, this is actually about three quarters of the way through the game's story. There is no beginning, middle, or end. The whole thing is just middle. The stakes are never raised. Characters that are introduced get no development. Things just happen and you're expected to go along with it. So, how do we find the Awoken? They live all the way out at the edge of the darkness. The last place the light touches. Can't we just stay here with the murderous robots? No. Little light. Don't do that. Ah, uh, goodbye character development. I'll see you in the DLC, I guess. We now head to an area called The Reef. It appears on your galaxy map and everything, so you would assume it would have a few playable missions or something. Well, that would obviously be too good of an idea, because the only thing in The Reef is a cutscene. A non-interactive, dumb, boring cutscene that rips off the intro to the Cloud City scene from Empire and adds nothing but more characters to not develop. They say they'll make you a key to the Black Garden if you can bring back the head of a Vex Gate Lord robot thing. We'll make you a key. How's that? So, you kill the robot and bring back its head, and they tell you where to go to get to the Black Garden, and that's all you do in the Reef area. The leaked DLC is supposed to take place there in one of the expansions, but there you go, I guess. After you do a series of extremely dull and uninspired missions set on Mars, that have no cutscenes or anything of importance to them, you go through a portal into the Black Garden, fight some more of the same dudes you've been fighting for the last few hours, get to this funky looking area where the darkness resides, but instead of the darkness morphing into some cool or interesting boss, you have to kill the same mini-boss three times that you've fought before in previous missions. The Shroud of Darkness is lifting, and light returns to the Traveler. You hear that? They couldn't even be bothered to show the light returning to the Traveler. They just tell you that it happened while you look at the same area you've just been fighting in for the last 20 minutes. We cut back to the tower and get a boring and cliche speech from the speaker about how everything is good again. It's a day for pretty speeches and medals. But we know the real fight takes place out there. No we don't, and I still don't know shit. She gives you her gun, and tells you that there'll be more story in future games or DLC, and then fucks off for good, answering nothing, frustrating us, and leaving us as knowledgeable as when we first began. The universe doesn't feel changed because of what we did. In fact, it feels exactly the same, and that's the end of the epic story they promised. That is what they bigged up for all those years. We didn't even know how big Halo was gonna get. How, how can anything be bigger than Halo? We'll find out. What a fucking joke. Great. What do we do now? Good question. What do we fucking do? You may be asking yourself, okay, so the story is lackluster and ultimately completely forgettable, but what about the actual game? Because that's what's most important, right? Well, that's a good question. I have a rule when it comes to games and stories. My motto is that I can forgive a lackluster story if the actual gameplay is good, but I can't forgive an interesting story if the gameplay just isn't there. But I'm happy to say that Destiny is a total blast to sit down and play. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is what you'd expect. It's Halo, but you can look down the sights. The three character upgrade trees are relatively interesting and different, and leveling up is well-paced and fun to play around with. The four different enemy types are all quite varied, and all require slightly different playstyles in order to defeat them. The issues arise as you start to add the various other layers of gameplay. The basic framework of Destiny is that there are five playable areas, four of them being playable planets where the story missions are set, and the fifth being the tower hub world. There are four or five story missions on each of these planets, with an explore and strike option as well. All four of the maps, visually at least, are quite varied and different. They're quite large, and have multiple linked areas inside them to explore. Unfortunately, every mission is built around these semi-open world maps though, so you end up seeing and traversing the exact same location multiple times, which is never a good thing. Now, nearly every mission and shooters like these are based around simple get from A to B objectives. Which is fine, Halo's a fantastic example of this. The actual point of where you get might not be contextually important, but the mission designers can make the journey important. Lord of the Rings is great because the journey is exciting. You know the ring's gonna be destroyed at the end, but it doesn't matter, and it's the same with Halo. Set pieces, vehicle and chase sequences, all are specifically dotted through the levels to pad them out and make them engaging. You never know what's coming around the corner, it's exciting. But in Destiny, you just drive your dumb hoverbike around the same area you just went through. It becomes a chore, because the objective is never something interesting. And 
story beats are never engaging. It makes it a complete slog, especially when in every mission, and I mean literally every single mission, you go to a place and scan a thing. You go to a place and scan a thing. I mentioned earlier that the mission design is atrocious, and this is one of the roots of the problem. You go to a place and scan a thing about 37 times over the course of the four hour campaign, and that's not including the strikes. I'm not joking, just look at this. The tower hub area also manages to be a complete waste of potential. It's a sterile area where the only interaction you have with NPCs are handing in fetch quests or mission rewards. They don't even talk to you or anything. They have all these famous actors in the game voicing all these fucking people. I really don't know why they bothered. Bill Nye, Peter Dinklage, Nathan Fillion, Gina Torres, and that guy from Fringe and The Wire are all notable and talented people. But they're given absolutely nothing to work with. I've seen some people railing on Peter Dinklage's performance as the ghost. But really, you try and say this dialogue in a convincing way. No, seriously, listen to this, pause it, and try doing the voice for yourself. That wizard came from the moon. When you come back from a mission, why isn't there some kind of interaction from your vanguard leader? A small cutscene introducing them to us or something? Hey Guardian, it's nice to see a new face around here. I was in Fringe and The Wire. Painfully obvious that these actors were chosen not because they were right for the role, but because they all have audiences and fan bases they can pull from, or they're currently relevant. And of course, the game is built around being this weird MMO light, with strikes and raids and co-op on everything. I couldn't help but stop every now and again and ask myself, how does Destiny being a mutant hybrid MMO help anything? The only advantages it has is that you can see random people running around the same map as you, and every now and again there are public events with some boring objective to complete. I guess you can also see other people in the tower running around. You can't you can't interact with any of them, you can't trade with them, there's no in-game chat system, sure you can point or dance, but what fucking good is that? Nearly everything fun you can do is capped as well, meaning that you can only get rewards for doing certain things a limited number of times a week before you can do it again. The only way you can get the best gear in the game is by doing the raid, but guess what? You can only do it once a week, and the loot is completely random. There are no guarantees that you're going to get anything good for it. The tokens you get for playing strikes in the crucible are also capped. It's so transparent to me that these artificial barriers have been placed all over the game purely to inflate the amount of time you need to play to be able to get the most out of it. Then of course you move on to the Crucible, the PvP competitive multiplayer section of Destiny. And it's terrible. It doesn't complement the PvE in any way. It tries to cram too many gameplay ideas into this style of multiplayer that just isn't fun. It's usually pretty laggy and weird because the gamers have tried to decide whose gadgets and gun abilities should win in a fight. And there are not a wide enough variation of maps or vehicles to keep things interesting. The balancing is fucking whack as well. But worst of all, the Crucible holds back every single element of the PvE. The best gun in the game, the Vex Mythoclast, which you can only get from doing the raid on hard was completely nerfed because it was too overpowered in multiplayer. Where's the fun in that? Loot-based games are fun because the goal is that you eventually want to get stupidly overpowered. It feels like all the guns and abilities are based around being balanced for the Crucible, so Bungie can't have any fun with it. The primary weapons are the most generic guns you've ever seen. It's all the same shit. And these are the people who invented the Needler and the Energy Sword for Christ's sake. Apart from the exotic weapons, which granted are all pretty visually cool and different, the weapon variation is about as stagnant and dull as you can get in a first-person shooter. I don't understand why they didn't completely ditch the idea of the Crucible and have an elaborate version of Horde mode or Firefight in its place. If you want to have a scan the thing and defend the blank section in every fucking mission of your game, why not make it into a tower defense Horde minigame with various upgrades and things that are actually engaging and interesting? And on top of all that, you have the loot system, which ideally should be the reason you get addicted to the game. The never-ending search for that bit of gear with a slightly higher defense or whatever. But it never really works out like that. It's built around a system of what are known as engrams, little glowing balls that drop out of enemies, some of which will auto-decrypt themselves and instantly give you a piece of gear. But once you get to the higher levels, they'll need to be decrypted by the cryptarch. Random loot needs to have certain attributes to make it satisfying. You either need a fuck ton of it all the time, or you need to have some kind of guarantee reward for completing certain events, challenges, or mission parameters. In early videos of the game, from like a year before it was going to be released. They showed chests that spewed out tons of interesting shit. This is what chests are now. Yep, nothing more than a boring piece of upgrade material or sometimes a gun you don't need or want. One of the biggest problems I have with the loot system is that once you get to the higher levels, the game still insists on giving you the shitty green engrams that you don't ever, and I mean ever, need. They're entirely pointless and do nothing but point out how shallow the system is once you reach the higher levels. And there's never any sense of excitement when you're decrypting an engram, it's just, so what shitty thing that I don't want will I get this time? What's the point of getting excited when you know it's just going to be another boring bit of metal with a sight on it? Where's the creativity gone? In fact, the enemies in this game do have cool weapons, but you can't pick them up. You 
can only be killed by them. You can also do these super difficult events and have a chance of getting good shit. Problem is it's random. So you might carry a shitty team through the raid, and guess what? You get nothing. But that one shitty player might get that one piece of raid gear that you want, and you get nothing. I've done the raid about six times. I've got barely anything to show for it. Guess I have to wait till next week to try again. I don't understand why they don't just give everyone in the team the equivalent of the same thing. If one person gets the raid helmet, everyone else in the fire team should get the equivalent for their character. If someone gets a good gun, then everyone else should get a gun as well. Then you avoid the moment when there are one or two people at the end of the raid who are filled with joy and happiness because they happen to get the thing that they wanted, while everyone else just sits in silence and misery as they realise how much time they wasted for nothing. Hearing their joy is like rubbing salt into the wound, and then rubbing that salty wound onto another salty wound. It seems like something clearly went wrong in the development cycle of this game. It's drastically different to various videos that were released only a year before it was out, and multiple Bungie employees left the project in that very same window. Of course, you have the composer, Marty O'Donnell, who was arguably one of the most important and recognisable faces at Bungie, who was fired from the company after something went down. And clearly, something did go down, seeing as later he won a lawsuit with Bungie for little under $100,000 for being terminated without cause. Then, of course, the lead writer left about a year before the game was set to release. When you start connecting the dots in various different pieces of evidence, something just isn't right about it. Look at this, this is the official Bungie V-Doc from a year before Destiny was set to release. The menus are completely different, they mention planets that straight up aren't in the game at all. You can go from Earth to Venus to Mars to the Moon to Saturn. And in another video they show part of a cutscene that just isn't in the game. Why is the city breathing down my neck? Why don't you put that down so we can talk? Out here in the wild, this is how we talk. Does that character seem familiar to you? That's because it's the exact same character model as the Queen's brother from the campaign, but his voice is completely different, and it's a completely different situation. And it doesn't end there. There were threads all over Reddit and Bungie's website that claimed, remember none of this is fact, it's all just theory at this point, that the game was completely different at one point. Supposedly, a playtester went through an early build of the campaign, which had many more planets and an actual story with real characters. This is what that scene earlier was probably from. I also found another interesting piece that supports this theory. It was allegedly an interview with an anonymous Bungie employee, who claimed that there there were sudden and abrupt changes to Destiny because of tension between the higher-ups, and a lack of a coherent vision for what they wanted the game to be. One side of the team wanting an epic Mass Effect style narrative driven story, and the other side fighting against it because they thought it wouldn't be easily accessible. So when important people started leaving Bungie, the project fell apart. The story was completely retconned and huge sections of dialogue were cut and re-recorded to fit the new story. So when the guy was hired to write the grimoire cards, he used the remnants of what was left of the original story to try and give the world some illusion of a deep universe. Which also explains why you can't view the cards from in the game, because it was seven months from release and it was too late in development to add it in. Various other little bits and pieces start to make sense as well, like how the first mission of the game has a much more cinematic vibe to it. Enemies climb on the walls using trip mines and things in the environment of a more cinematic nature which dynamically changed the presentation of the game. But after that level, it all stops. The fallen never climb on the walls again or use trip mines. Nothing cinematic happens again. The game feels like a shell, a prototype for something much deeper. Of course, all of this could be complete and utter bollocks. It's impossible to know the reliability of these sources. There is is much more you can read about cut content and such. I'll link to all the interviews and other things in the description so you can have a read for yourself. Maybe parts of it is true. Maybe it's all true. Maybe it's a fan who's desperately searching for excuses, creating an elaborate ruse to try to trick people. Chances are we'll never find out the truth. I suppose it's also completely plausible that Bungie just didn't have the freedom they had under Microsoft. And maybe content was cut because Activision wanted the game to be released on last gen consoles concurrently to maximize sales, using all the cut assets as DLC as an easy way to make even more money. But even then, it's still possible that maybe Bungie just didn't deliver. Maybe they did just lack vision. Perhaps it was too elaborate an idea. It seems to me like Destiny is trying to appease to too many demographics. Story-focused gamers will be disappointed by the lack of any direction it has. It would have been great if they had everything that was in the game now, but they also had 10 or so structured missions that could have all the things you usually expect from a game of this caliber. But as it is, it's pretty lackluster in that respect. Multiplayer gamers will not be gripped for long either, with basic features like map voting, private lobbies, and just the general loose structure that the multiplayer has leaves me frustrated more than enthralled. It's a fucking free-for-all, and not in a good way. It's a tangled mess of laggy connections and bad netcodes and unbalanced systems and gameplay. It's one part of the game that almost certainly has no legs. Then you have the MMO players, who will find the lack of real interaction and means of communication to be unsatisfying, when there are so many other games out there that can offer exactly what they're looking for. I guess that's the main problem. Destiny doesn't try to stick to one demographic and please them. 
It's just not inventive. It's so safe and muted, too broad, and in hindsight, completely predictable. But you know what, despite my constant negativity, that's not to say that I don't enjoy the game. In fact, it's the opposite. I can see something there. There's a reason I'm still playing the game now. It's so much promise, so much potential. And it's safe to assume that the game will be radically different in the years to come with all the patches and updates they plan. I call Destiny an organized mess because it is. The animation, music, and menus are stellar. The art is gorgeous. And there's a nice pacing visually as you level up and get better gear. And Jesus Christ, Bungie, you know how to do skybox. Boxes, but the storytelling is clumsy and virtually non-existent, and certain gameplay choices leave you puzzled. Maybe if they spent less time animating their weird little robot coat hangers and spent more time building a world we should care about, perhaps the game would be a bigger success. They need to decide whether to focus on either the breadth of content or the detail of a story or in-depth gameplay systems. You can't appease everyone, and approaching it in the way that they did creates a clusterfuck of conflicting ideas. But it's not exactly like the game sold poorly or anything. There's going to be another Destiny. I'll forgive them this once, so go on Bungie, show us what you're really made of. Of. Don't expect videos like this very often, folks, unless it's ridiculously successful or whatever. This isn't a gaming channel, it's a whatever channel. I do whatever the hell I want on it, and I felt like making a video about Destiny. So what do you think of it? Do you like or dislike the game? Did you like or dislike the video? Did I miss out anything of merit? Tell me in the comments below. Jesus Christ, my voice. Uh, you can probably tell as the video goes on that it just gradually fades. Listen to it, because I've been recording audio for like two hours straight. Fucking killer. But anyway, make sure to check out some of my other videos, and as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are appreciated. I'll see you next time. Bye.